modifying eukaryotic RNA splicing with Morpholino oligos. Here we're looking at a freshly transcribed chain of RNA, a pre-messenger RNA. In most eukaryotes, protein coding genes consist of regions called exons, which are interrupted by non-coding sequences called introns. These interrupting introns are removed by spliceosomes before the mature messenger RNA chain can be sent out to the ribosome to be translated into a protein. A single pre-messenger RNA transcript might be spliced in one of several alternative ways to produce different mature messenger RNAs. Alternative splicing is used naturally by cells to generate tissue-specific transcripts or to produce different transcripts at specific stages of an organism's development. Now, with the use of Morpholino oligos, the pattern of splicing can be manipulated in the lab. This can be done in cell cultures or in vivo. If you're not familiar with the antisense molecules called Morpholinos, see the animation titled, What are Morpholinos? Modifying splicing with Morpholinos is a powerful way to study how splicing works in a specific gene, to downregulate or completely silence a specific protein, to upregulate a specific protein, or to restore activity to a disabled protein. In this video, we will look at various splice modifying techniques which can be used to change protein expression, sometimes restoring protein function. First, here's a quick refresher on how splicing works. The spliceosome and SNRNPs. In eukaryotes that splice their RNA, like us, most genes have between 4 and 15 introns which must be cut out before a messenger RNA is ready to start translation into a protein, but some genes have as many as 300 introns, and some have none. The spliceosome is a complex of proteins and RNA protein structures called SNRPs, short for Small Nuclear Ribonucleoproteins, SNRNP. The major spliceosome forms in a series of steps beginning when subunits of the major spliceosome assemble at two very important sequences found in most introns, the U1 binding sequence and U2 binding sequence. A SNRP called U1 binds directly to the U1 binding sequence on the 5' end of each intron. Meanwhile, a protein complex binds near the U2 binding sequence at the 3' end. A different spliceosome uses U11 and U12 SNRPs instead, but we won't discuss that minor spliceosome further. These splice junction complexes associate with each other, bending the RNA between them into a loop. At this point, a SNRP called U2 attaches to the U2 binding sequence, triggering assembly of the mature spliceosome. The intron is cut out as the two exons are connected. When splicing is complete, the entire complex disassembles. Antisense Morpholino oligos can be used to block SNRP binding sites, which changes the pattern of splicing. Morpholinos are usually 25 bases in length. Their sequences can be custom designed to block almost any SNRP binding site. We'll divide splice sites into two groups, internal splice sites and the first or last splice site, because blocking either of these groups usually leads to different outcomes. Blocking an internal splice site usually causes exon skipping, while blocking the first or last splice site typically causes intron inclusion. In this case, the second U1 SNRP has been blocked, which is an internal splice site. In most cases, doing this will cause the protein complex to bind to the second U2 SNRP, skip the blocked site, and go all the way to the U1 site to initiate a splice. The result is exon skipping. The exon upstream of the blocked site will not be included in the mature mRNA. In contrast, let's look at blocking the first splice site. If the first U1 site is blocked, when the protein complex forms on the first U2 site, there is nothing upstream for it to bind with. It fails to find a target and no splice is made. Without being spliced out, the first intron will become part of the mature mRNA. Blocking the first SNRP binding site in a pre-mRNA typically causes inclusion of some or all of the adjacent intron into the mature mRNA. Now back to internal splice sites, and we'll look at the other side of the introns. If an internal U2 site is blocked, its corresponding U1 typically directs a splice to the next U2 site downstream. This leads to skipping the exon in contact with the blocked U2 site. And finally, if the last U2 site is blocked, the protein complex will fail to form, 
so the last intron will become part of the mature mRNA. Results shown here are the typical results of a splice modification experiment, but sometimes unexpected splice outcomes happen. To interpret the outcome of a splice modifying experiment, it's important to be aware of these unusual outcomes. For more, see the supporting document, Possible Results of Morpholino Splice Modifications. Important consequences arising from splice modifications include induced frame shifts, bringing premature termination codons in frame, and nonsense mediated decay. We won't discuss details of these outcomes in this video, but they're important to understand for designing splice modifying experiments and interpreting the results, both at the protein level and for studying gels from reverse transcriptase PCR. Protein silencing via modifying splicing. As shown in a previous animation in this series, the simplest way to silence gene expression with a morpholino is to block translation. To do that, you would target the start sequence or 5' untranslated region in a mature mRNA. That said, this is not always possible. To check if such a silencing experiment is working, you often need a protein specific antibody for Western blot analysis. If such an antibody doesn't exist, silencing by modifying splicing is a powerful alternative. Though silencing by modifying splicing takes a bit more planning to set up, the effectiveness of the silencing experiment can be easily tested with reverse transcriptase PCR. The trick to silencing protein expression by modifying splicing is to induce exon skipping that will cause an early stop codon to show up in the mature mRNA. When enzymes in the cytoplasm detect an mRNA with a premature stop codon, a response called nonsense-mediated decay is triggered. The mRNA is quickly destroyed after a single translation, before producing a functionally significant amount of protein through repeated translations. Because inducing a premature stop codon by splice modification also involves causing a frame shift, the single translation of the splice-modified mRNA will usually not be functional because the amino acids downstream of the modified splice will be changed by the frame shift. To conjure up an early stop codon, you can use a morpholino that will induce exon skipping of an exon with a nucleotide count that is not divisible by three, not divisible by whole codons. This causes a frame shift to appear in the codon sequence downstream of the skipped exon. In the worst case scenario, this scrambles the protein that was supposed to be coded for by the mRNA. Usually, though, the frame shift will conjure a premature stop codon and trigger the mRNA's destruction via nonsense mediated decay. Another method that often brings a premature stop codon in frame is to target the first splice site and trigger an intron inclusion, which might produce a frame shift as a bonus. Here are some things to watch out for when choosing a target. Some genes have one or more introns in the 5' UTR. If there are two introns in the 5' UTR, skipping the exon between them won't frame shift the sequence downstream. It is the binding of the ribosome to the start codon that determines the reading frame. Removing an exon from the mature RNA upstream of the start codon is unlikely to affect the reading frame downstream of the start. If you're lucky enough to have one or more introns in the 5' UTR of your transcript, another tactic for protein silencing becomes available. Simply skip the exon containing the start codon. In many cases, this is sufficient to prevent expression of the transcript. Upregulate a specific protein. In some cases, a single pre mRNA template produces several alternatively spliced mature mRNAs. Alternatively spliced mature mRNAs are called isoforms. If you want to upregulate a protein coded by a specific isoform, and if several isoforms are being expressed together, you can sometimes target a splicing site used to produce a competing isoform that will convert that competitor into the isoform you want to upregulate. With more of that desired mRNA, you should get more of the desired protein. Restore activity of a disabled protein. The following techniques can restore the function of a protein which has suffered a debilitating mutation. They only work in specific cases, but can be extremely useful when they do work. Several FDA-approved morpholino drugs have been developed exploiting this mechanism. 
Correction of a Frameshift Mutation If a protein is disabled due to a frameshift mutation, an insertion or deletion, it can sometimes be corrected by inducing the appropriate frameshifting exon skip. If the correct exon is skipped, the reading frame of all codons downstream from the skip will be restored. Restoration, of course, comes at the cost of a newly skipped exon. If codons in the skipped exon were essential for the encoded protein's function, this technique might not be helpful. But in a surprising number of cases, not all protein domains are essential for function. This is the strategy behind several FDA-approved morpholino oligo drugs for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which skip exons of the human dystrophin gene, including etaplersin for exon 51, goladersin for exon 53, and casimersin for exon 45. Restoration of a newly mutated splice site If a mutation has created a new splice site resulting in unwanted isoforms, simply cover the mutant splice site with a morpholino to restore healthy function. With the new mutant site blocked, splicing may return to the site used by the wild-type pre-mRNA. This technique was first demonstrated in early splice modification work with mutations causing beta thalassemia. In summary, morpholino-oligo sequences can be designed to artificially modify pre-mRNA splicing. Depending on the target, Alternative splicing can be used to silence or reduce protein expression, upregulate a specific protein, restore function to proteins which were disabled by specific types of mutations, or to simply study how splicing works in a specific gene. Testing the efficacy of a specific splice modifying morpholino can be done via reverse transcriptase PCR, often in combination with gel electrophoresis to visualize PCR product sizes.